Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today I want to talk about Neumorphic Design once more, but today we create with the clay package and the YouTube package and also some social buttons this nice little application. And now without further ado, let's get started. So you can see down there I prepared my preview that I all the time see what we want to achieve and I can recreate the whole thing. So what we can see is that we have one column and one bottom bar with some buttons. So I assume this is one column up there and one column down here or row down here. And what I will do is I create a column that contains both of them. So I can uh, make an expanded widget above the first one and an expanded widget for the bottom one. And then they can share the space and all the stuff inside here will be their own column. So also we need some new packages. For example, that looks like a YouTube player. And we have some social icons where we have also nice icons and um, things like that. So we will use the feathers package and also the social media buttons. So first of all, I will remove everything from the scaffold and just leave a column because that is the main column that contains our children's. And we have one column here inside and also a row. And I save that for now. And inside of that row, we will have multiple children. And this is our clay containers. I can create of them four. And with that, we can see all the stuff. If you don't know how you can create this multiple carrots, you can watch my video from Android Studio where I explain exactly how this works. And inside of these clay containers, for now, we just make icons. So this is a child. We call it icon with icons dot uh, fast rewind. And we make that slightly bigger, 102, 102. And we can see it's up there at the moment. And most likely all of them will be. So if I copy that child uh, down here and we copy that here and we copy that here, it looks very much like a widget, right? So we don't want to do that all the time, but for now we keep it. And the second button will be play arrow. Then this one will be um, fast forward. And the last one will be skip, I think. Skip next, yeah, well. All right, so now we have that nice little row, but the problem is that it is on the beginning. So what we want to do is we wrap the first column that we have with an expanded widget. And because we do so, we push the content completely to the bottom. And what we also can see is this clay containers already start to want some values, right? So this one wants to be colors, colors dot base, uh, we call it base color. And why do we call it base color? Because all the colors that are, uh, have to be the same, right? For this um, clay containers. So what I will do is I take this color dot green, call it base color. And this base color I can use as a background color down here. And I can use it for all the clay containers. And also I want to wrap that with a padding so that it looks a bit more nicely. And you can see already mm, maybe row is exactly what we want, but we have the problem that the sizes need to fit correctly. So what I will do is I smaller the sizes for now. That should be fair enough. And as you can see, we have to do it now for all of these widgets. So there seems to be a problem. So I take this padding and I create a new widget out of it. And one solution would be to just cut it out. Another solution is if we go to Flutter, inspect it up here, and we select now the padding where we are, like this one, and I press, so I had some kind of error here. But now if we go into the Flutter outline, we see the widget tree that is built. And if we make a right click on the padding that we have here, then we can have the method extract widget. And if I do so, I can just name it somehow. So for example, this is a clay button um, bottom for me. And you see it automatically creates the clay button uh, bottom and it gives also the value base color inside. And if we jump into it, you can see the class for the clay button uh, bottom button. Ooh. That is not a good name. <laughs> Let's change that immediately to clay button widget. As you see, the clay button widget um, directly got the base color inside. And now we can also specify, for example, the size for that. So what we can do is give it the size. And what we also want to do is give him some icon data. And with that, we can go now here and say we have final properties like final icon data. 
which is icon data and final uh, into uh, double I think that would be the size it complains now that we have to add more and now we have the option to enhance this one here with the size that we give 32 and I think the size should be defaulted because I don't want to change it all the time so I add here the 82 for that and of course we can more make that much better by taking the media queries and take the width that we have and divided it by the separate spaces but I think for now it is fine if I just do it like that and we want to give it icon data icons dot um, fast rewind that looks pretty good and now we can remove all of these but we keep that so command d for copy a new line and then we just replace this and we remove that clay container and we go further we copy this twice we take these inside and put it here in the container remove it again and we take the icon skip last but not least and we are done all right so now i just want to add in that main row the alignment for center so that it's centered of course and also what we can see down here this uh, i don't know how to call it but border down here uh, or notch um, takes away the space that we want so i will wrap the column widget inside of a safe area and if i do so you can see it pushes automatically the spaces away and if i take a look down here our base color looks a bit different right also what i can see is that this row has a different color than the background of the scaffold so i would take give that row a container surrounding it this container should have the background color of this one so we call it a nef color it's color and a nef color and this nef color of course had to be set so we take this base color in that case i think it is pretty dark so color is dot black for now and you can see we have to replace all the colors with the nef color but what we can do is inside of doing inside of the clay button widget we can set the color from base color that we give inside we can set the icon color to white colors dot white okay that looks pretty good now i will take a short break and take a look what exactly are the colors for that navigation bar so give me a second actually i thought about it and maybe it is a good idea to also show you how i can get the colors from something like this like an image or something for my projects so you go for example i open the whole thing now in firefox and if i make a right click on it i can inspect the elements and usually if you have somewhere a color or something you have these nice little um, helpers here and if you click on that uh, part you can select any color on that um, on that image and you can immediately get the color that you want to use so for example you can use down here you can see the color for this black area down here is 2c 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 which is pretty good and now i can use that immediately in our project so back to android studio instead of the base color that we have inside of here we have the color 0xff for full opaque and then we enter this 2c 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 and you can see that was too much because that was the wrong one it's not the base color that we want so we revert that so we replace the nuff color with that color and as you see it looks pretty good already the only problem that we have is that safe area down here so even if i change now the base color to the right color so let's go back to firefox select that color here and we have 464646 four, six, four, six, and i can replace it here so color 0x ff for full opaque and i'm going to remove that and we can see the color up here and inside of our simulator it looks like that but if we were take another look into our image we see that down here in the safe area there is actually no background so we don't see here anything so we have multiple ways to solve that problem how i will do it i will remove the safe area and as you see now we have it on the bottom and i will give the row that surrounds the uh, buttons a padding and another thing is we could also give it only and say bottom and save the whole thing 
and now we don't have the space up there and we still have the nice little arrow functions. Another thing is the color of the buttons inside is still not quite correct. So can I use also this? Oh yeah, perfect. So let's use that and click in the color. And now I copied it even, that's even better. And now all of our clay button widgets are not white as a color. They have the color in default, 0x, ff, and then this color. And if we take a look now, it looks already pretty neat. The only thing is one of the buttons is red and it has also, it is a bit special. It has it, um, a round clay container inside of it. Okay, so what we can do here, clay button widget will don't help us in that case. So what we can do is I can take the play arrow and I copy more or less everything that is inside here with the padding and all the things and replace it with here. I could also do it inside of the clay button widget, but I don't want to. And now we can say I can start play arrow and the size would be, I think 62, I said, no, 82 or, uh, yeah. Okay, so 82. And if we take another look into the simulator, we can see something changed, that is all right. And the color is now 7B, 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 that is correct. And the clay container gets the base color, which is wrong. It gets the enough color. If I do so, we see it's right now. And now we have to surround that icon again with a clay container. And this clay container gets a different color. Um, no, this gets the same color. So we have color, enough color. But what I want to do is I want to give that a border radius of, for example, 50. And now, we see already it looks pretty good, but we have also to surround that one with a padding. Just a small padding just, but just that we can see there is a difference. Maybe still with eight, yeah. So, but now we have to improve all the paddings surrounding the other ones so that they have a 16 padding. Now we have the padding outside, but we have also to surround all the icons with a padding of eight so that they have the same space and you can see it's getting a bit uh, crushed now. So what I will do is I will uh, make the icon smaller. I think with that it should already solve the problem. And now we only have to change the size for that icon here. And now the color of the icon has to be red. That is the main reason why we did all that stuff. And with that we already have nearly the same navigation down here. Of course there is no functionality yet, but still that works. And the other benefit is we can already start with our column up here where we have like text, we have a divider, we have another text, then we have our YouTube and statistics and so on and so forth. All right. So we managed it to update the navigation bar up there. So we have, can already create our play button. We inserted some clay button widgets that we created. We learned a new method to extract our widgets. And also we can now set our um, base colors and everything inside. So we are ready to go further. And in the next season, uh, episode, I will show you how to create a column for the text, for the YouTube player and so on and so forth. So stay tuned until tomorrow. See ya.